it's been ages since I've done a vlog, um, so apologies. Happy New Year. It is 2022, 4th of January today. It's Tuesday, so the kids have just come back to school and it's really calm and quiet and lovely. Um, and I'm not back in to London until next week, so that's a nice little break. Um, the lighting is a little bit over the top <laughs> because I'm on a new phone, so I apologise that I'm incredibly bright. To be fair, this is my natural, incredibly pale skin colour, so you just have to bear with. So I hope you're all well. I hope you had a lovely 2021 Christmas. We were actually able to see people, which was lovely. My sister came down from Chester and we were all together. Um, my brother was here. He's a fireman, so he was working on Christmas Eve, but came off shift and came to join us Christmas Day. Uh, my parents are just next door, so we had the houses. We have a connecting door between the two. They're kind of in an annex, essentially. It's a large, large annex, so they're not hidden away <laughs> and uh, so we had the door open and the kids could be in one side and we could be in the other and then mix when we needed to so that worked really well because they had fun we had fun but we didn't have to put up with five kids being really noisy because my sister has two girls and we have three boys so it was nice I hope you all had a, uh, an equally lovely Christmas it was just so nice to actually do Christmas this year um I have done quite uh, well, I had a quick look at what I showed on the last vlogcast and I realised that I've done quite a few bits since then. So I'll probably just jump straight in. Um, this is my Amy cardigan, all finished. Um, the pattern calls, it's a Hohi Locatelli pattern from one of the interpretations volumes. Uh, I can't remember which one. I'm not sure. Um, it calls for five colours and five stripes. It's a, a cardigan that comes across like that. Um, but I chose to do mine with six colours because I'm tall. So I added in this deeper colour because she's got, uh, Hoagie has like a dark, almost like a navy royal blue uh, um, at the bottoms. And I thought that was really effective. So I wanted to go for something that was soft and light and transitional, not too blocky, but I wanted the darker colour on the bottom. Um, so I absolutely love this. I'll pop it on quickly. I wear it all the time. It's in our Alpaca Merino, my Alpaca Merino Sport. Um, and it's super soft and cosy and just really wearable. I really love it. So I, I definitely would knit more things similar to that. I've got kits for this exact colourway on the website um, and I've been dyeing those up so they're ready to ship because I've got, uh, I'm headed to Unravel in Farnham in February and then on to the East Anglia Yarn Festival which is a new one, so excited for that um, and I am doing that in March so I've been dyeing up kits for those. So that's my Amy cardigan. Catherine, who has done a little bit of sample knitting for me, also knitted uh, Pink Fizz by Andrea Maori, which is a really wearable pattern. This is in our British stock, held double with um, one of the mohair silks. So this is in the colourway without costumes, but you could do it in any colourway. I just love the way, sorry, it doesn't sit very well on the hanger. Uh, I love the way the coppery speckles come through. So that's a lovely one as well. Um, what else have I finished? So in that time, we've had advents, which I've got to be honest, doing advents, I was like, uh, I got my sister and my mum to help me wind them, label them, package them into individual packages that I printed different uh, pictures with the name of what it was and the inspiration behind it. It was a His Dark Materials advent and it just took forever. You know, the dyeing is only one small part of it and the dyeing takes quite a long time. So I must admit that when I was packaging them up with my mum and my sister, I was saying, I'm never doing advents again. This is so much work. And what you sell them for doesn't reflect how much work you put into them. I, I feel how much work I was putting into them. But I enjoyed it so much in December. I did an advent swap with Skein Cocaine from the US. I so enjoyed opening hers and I so enjoyed 
releasing the colorway each day on Instagram and seeing what other people thought of it and getting the feedback and yeah I just loved it I think it's such a fun experience with so many people doing advents all at the same time and sharing information on um, Instagram I loved watching the fiber fox one come out the wool kitchen Helen's was amazing with bits of mohair in it um, yeah just black elephant was a great one I just really really enjoyed the whole thing so I've already put up a listing <laughs> because I'm glad for punishment to do the 2022 one and I've already got ideas of what I'm gonna do the theme and I'm actually having a box made up this time one of the proper advent boxes with the doors so it means that um, it has a, a tray that slips in, which is from, made from a recycled plastic. So it means I can just put all 24 in and slide it shut and all the packaging is done in that sort of one go. So I've done, I'm looking at a few things like that to make it faster. Another thing I did last 2021 was I really wanted a British four ply um, colour uh base in there this is the british four ply uh, and i really wanted to offer that because i think that's one of the things that um people come to telling yarns for is the the british breed wools and british mill yarns excuse me <laughs> bless me sorry um so i really wanted that in there but at the moment john arban mill john arban textile don't offer minis to uh through wholesale for hand dyers to dye um, so I had to make up, I had to take a 100 gram skein of yarn and wind it into a cake and then wind it by hand on my umbrella, I had to buy a new yarn swoosh with a handle on the top, into five 20 gram skeins weighing out the cake as I did it. So I knew that each one was around 20 grams, like just over 20 grams. And I had to do that for, I think I had maybe 14 British four ply ones. So if you think there's 24 in each of those times 14 and I had to do that. Oh, it just took forever. Um, so I spoke to John Arb and I spoke to Helena there and they're going to do, hopefully maybe be able to do me minis this year. So I've already spoken to them about that. Um, so yeah, I've, I just, I just feel I've tried to look at all the things that made it difficult last year and not make them difficult this year because I so enjoyed it and I want to do it again. So this was what I knitted in the end. This was the um, cow pattern that came with the advent. Um, I think with hindsight, I might have knitted it double sided or maybe a little bit shorter, um, but it, it wears nicely. Um, so it's all the different, all the different um, worlds that you get in the um, his dark materials credits at the beginning can you see like there's the different worlds that connect so you've got the upside down mountain over the right way up city and there's the hot air balloon um, and these were the, some of the colorways from it I was so pleased with it I really worked hard to lay the colorways out and look at that they would go together so there was plenty of uh, tone uh, variegated and speckled ones and there was plenty of like beautiful semi-solids and some real variegated ones and then some softer that one's a real soft speckled one um so that's what I was trying to go for and then I also knit up because I just love advents I haven't blocked it yet so apologies I knit up when does it start um this 25 days of color cow by handmade closet and you knit it in the round as a tube and then you because you've done a provisional cast on you can join the beginning and the end together to make it like a seamless you can see seamless thing so it starts those were the first colorways these first ones here and I went in the order that they came out the advent. So then those were the next ones. I just, oh, I've got it inside out. So you're seeing the join, <laughs> the jog. Yeah. I so love this pinky red, this Mrs. Coulter that I did. And also Ruta Scardi was the one behind that. Um, and then it went through to the teals and purples. Uh, and this soft biscuity variegated and then there were greys and some pops of blue and orange and then there was a really light pink and what I really enjoyed was I had 
uh, on the 24th on Christmas Eve, you got a mini skein that I'd made up of ribbon knits. Um, oh, here it is, sorry, here, ribbon knits yarn that they actually get um, milled for them. And it's a bit like the spin cycle yarn, so you can't really see it very well in the video. I'm trying to see whether I've got it anywhere over there. Um, and my, I think one of my favourite colourways from the whole thing was this uh, Caught Between Worlds. And it was like, you know when you get uh, a prism and you break down a light, a white light at school when you're in like middle school or upper school, and it breaks down into like the rainbow kind of thing. It's supposed to capture that. And I was so pleased it came out just how I wanted it to. So it's that one there I'm talking about. So that's all one colourway. Uh, so I think I might end up doing that as a sort of special at some point. So yeah, that's a great pattern. I really enjoyed that one. And you can wear it um, like wrapped two times over. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do it because it will ruin my hair. Not that my hair's neat, but you know what I mean. Um, so that was the advent. It was so much fun. I added in loads of little extras and bits um, and I just can't wait to do it again. The advent I got from Skein Cocaine was a Sound of Music one and she had this great, it's a like solid card that you could, um, with proper artwork, beautiful artwork, that you can put up on your wall so I'm thinking of framing that and then on the back it had the colourway guide and sorry it's back to frame um, and the colourways, I've chosen a selection of the colourways I really love to make a sea glass hat by Wool and Pine so I'm going to start with this black glitter, uh, then I'm going to go to this bluey, multicoloured blue. I just wound these up yesterday so I can knit on the train into that dark blue, bluey teal. And then this nice like strawberry one and a pebbly one. And then I'm going to go through, I'll see if I can hold them up. Um, those. I absolutely love these two, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a yarn like that dark one. I think that's beautiful. Um, and then how was it? I think it was like that. So yeah, there was a surprise, two black ones. There were some other ones in there as well. Let me grab them that I decided not to use in um, mine. So that was all the other colors that were in there. All super fun. It was really good, a really nice one, and it had some lovely stitch markers. I'll just show you those. I really thought they were cool. So because it was Sound of Music, she'd done, um, Gina had done these stitch markers, had somebody make them, that said Do, uh, Ray, and then Me. I thought that was so cool. Um, so that was lovely. I really, Really, like, I totally get why people love Advents. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed doing that. Um, so what else have I been knitting? I have predominantly been knitting. Sorry, I've got a bit of wool on my lip and my lips, glass, Vaseline stuff. Uh, I have been predominantly knitting this Montreola, uh, mini, mini Montreola, um, for Milo. So it's in this orangey, red and yellow speckled yarn as the base with these deep rusty red stripes and then a gold stripe and I think I'm probably going to end up having to put some gold into the bottom stripes of the arms because I'm running out of red so it is should I should have kept this before yeah the mini Montreola by Max the Knitter. I did not, I knew that, I just didn't dare say it because I wasn't sure until I checked. So it's that. So I've still got to do the rest of the arms, sleeves obviously, and the um, hood, and then I'm done. So I'm really pleased with that. It's got this cool bit where you add on, you like knit a whole band, and then you were supposed to mattress stitch it in, but I chose to kind of pick up and bind off at the same time. So I got this really neat and simple finish. So yeah, I've been enjoying that. I'm knitting it in what used to be my Fancy Pants DK, which is a cashmere merino nylon blend, just because it's super soft so the kids don't moan about 
itch. I, I've got to be honest, I can't see that. I can't see that he's gonna wear it very much. Felix never wears the flex light I knit for him. But they both asked me to knit something and what brand of mummy would I be if I didn't do it? So I thought I'd knit one thing and then I don't have to do it again. They like the toys I made, so I'll probably do more toys if they want something else in the future. The other thing I'll be coming back onto when I finish that is, uh, what's it called? Viburna from the Liner magazine. Um, Uh, ah, there it is. My burner. So this was in the pattern it's knit from John Arban Mills, I think. Is it their Devonia or yeah, I think it was from their Devonia, which is what I use for British Four Ply. I'm knitting it from um the oh it feels really light in comparison to that cashmere. Oh it's so light, considering that's half a adult jumper. In comparison to the cashmere merino nylon it's incredibly light so i'm knitting it in the gullet farm romney four ply i'm so in love with this stitch pattern in this yarn so this is a really um toothy it, in the skein i would say it feels quite scratchy and dry um in the although you can feel the lanolin in it once it's knitted up particularly in the um this stitch here i can't remember what it's called slip stitch i want to say um it's really got you can feel the lanolin and it's really soft and yeah i'm really excited about this so you start at the bottom sleeve knit up without it's not in it's not um in the round it's back and forth knit up and then you get to here and you add on like i'm not explaining this very well sorry um you where i've seamed it here down the underarm underneath the arm that is where you create stitches on a crochet chain so you end up with this long bit here see because this isn't joined at the bottom there and you knit all the way from the bottom front all the way over the shoulder and down the back and you're knitting across like that and then you're going to go down the sleeve again and you seam along here and down here. So I have just bound off here for the beginning of the neck. So that's at this top point here and that's going to be the beginning of the neck. Um, it's so light, I can't get over how light that is. So I'm using um, this light grey, which is on the website. Is it Pebble? I should know this. It's not pebble. It is. Luckily, I've got it in the cupboard just here. Hemlock grey, and then I use the blue is thistle blue. So I am really enjoying that, and I look forward to getting back to that and finishing it off once I've done Milo's Montreula mini Montreula. I can't get over how light that is, the fabric is, in comparison to the cashmere merino nylon. So much lighter. And that's in my hide and hammer bag. What am I doing? Love that bag. I'm hoping to see No from Hide and Hammer again at one of the shows, hopefully, although she had a baby not that long ago. So she might not be doing many shows to start with this year. Then I got for Christmas, sorry I'm leaning down, I've got all my stuff piled up down here. I dyed up, I um, officially got in Gotland Four Ply and Gotland Aran Weight um, from Laxton's Mill in Yorkshire. This is so soft and squidgy and silky and yet when you knit with it, it's got plenty of tooth and you can see, is it? Can you see the um, the halo on it as well? And it's got flecks of grey throughout. Um, I just love this. I think these two probably show the base colour really well. You can see there's flecks of grey in there. So this is a BFL Gotland mix. So it'll be so hard wearing and yet it's so luxurious and silky and soft and plump. Um, and I dyed these colourways up. This is Sugar Maple. These are from the Anna 
Green Gables um, collection. This is Rice Lily. Then we've got Red Clover. Really love that clay red. Then what was that? Uh, this is Cherry Blossom. What was the blue one? There's not loads of Oh, sorry, it looks blue. It's actually a, a greeny blue, uh, like a turquoisey colour. It's um, blue spruce. So it comes up, let me just grab it. It comes up, that's what confused me. Oh, I've left the label behind. Comes up much more green on the white bases. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's interesting how the non superwash yarns, they take a lot longer for the dye to bind so if you've got a superwash like this which is our confetti my confetti sock base it is superwash and white and it just drinks up the yarn the moment uh, the dye the moment you put it the dye in the bath whereas the gotland and blueface leicester non superwash takes much longer and so this picks up a lot of the green from the colorway and this picks up more of the blue and gray um so I'm planning to make with those, although I got to be honest, so I hadn't really clicked having not knitted, I tend to knit four ply um, and a bit of DK and some lace weight. I hadn't really appreciated that worsted as a yarn weight, an American yarn weight, is lighter than Aran weight, our UK um, base. So in the same way that sport weight is lighter than DK weight, uh, worsted is lighter than Aran weight. So I've dyed those up and the meterage is shorter, making the yarn in theory plumper um, than the Labienne worsted, the Cory worsted. That, so I want to knit from Amy Gillies worsted book, which I got for Christmas. Um, and yeah, I hadn't appreciated that the yarn I've got there is thicker, although I found that BFL Gotland comes up as a a thinner, actually the the yarn itself is slightly thinner than you'd expect. So I want to knit this by Tiff Nealon. It's uh, Stratified, I think it's called. So that's what those colours have been dyed up for. You need two of the main colour and then three of the others. I'll have to give you a, there's a cool hat as well. Yeah, Stratified. Stratified. That is stratified. So I'm going to knit those with that. I got loads of books for Christmas, and I actually, <laughs> I actually got um, Amy Gillies Worsted from uh, Liner Publishing. I got it. I bought it from James, my husband, and children as my Christmas present from them. And then I hadn't realised that I'd also asked my mum to buy it for me, which was very helpful of me. So I've got two copies. So I thought at the end of this video, I would do a giveaway. Um, so I'll, I'll mention it on Instagram as well, that I'll be doing that giveaway at the end of this. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know the details for that. I got Interpretations Volume 8, the new version. Um, apologies that this is all back to front. Have they got the pictures at the front? Yes, yeah, so there's some. I really like that Cardi by um, Hohe. There's some lovely ones in there. And then on that same theme, I got Vera's. Where is it? Stripes book from Liner Publishing. I love all the Liner stuff. These stripes in the front are, um, make your eyes go bonkers. I like the look of, well, I like the look of lots of bits in here, but one that jumped out, I can find it. Um, there's a couple that jumped out. I like the look of this one. I think that would be nice. Um, so yeah, I just, I love looking through pattern books. I absolutely love it. I got 52 weeks of socks. I know I'm behind the times on that. That was from Lina as well. 
and I will be doing some sock knitting this year. 2022, I plan to do some sock knitting. I got Moon and Turtle from Pum Pum Meg. Basically, all my Christmas presents this year were knitting books. Uh, I got one of the issues of uh, Amorosu. So I haven't had this before. I got it from the Fibre Fox website. Um, and yeah, it just it looks like a really lovely one to sit with a cup of coffee and read through. So I haven't had the chance because the kids and the, have been here. And we got some puppies as well. And that's been taking up loads of time. We've got two tiny little, they're like this big. I'd show them to you, but they're bonkers, crazy non-stop, weeing and pooing everywhere. Um, they're like dark brownie black. They're a brother and sister from a litter that belonged to my uncle's dog. She is like a mix of all kinds of terriers. She's a gingery beige colour, all fluffy and curly. And she's a real terrier uh, mixed, maybe like a bit of Yorkshire Terrier and a bit of other terriers in her. She's quite slight and small. And then she was bred with a miniature poodle and he's smaller than her and must be dark haired because all the puppies are blacky brown, either completely black or blacky brown. And we've got Hades, the kids named them. Hades, who is like just poodle. He looks like a poodle completely. And then we've got Thena, who really looks like a terrier. Um, I'll show you them at some point. And then for my birthday, which was in November, I got the Colours of Nature by Gould. Um, and this is all about natural dyeing. And I hope in the next couple of years to do a bit of natural dyeing and maybe if I have success with it, offer it up as, um, you know, sort of one-offs. Um, I like this page. It's such a beautiful book. Um, so yeah, I think that is everything I've been knitting on, everything I've been doing, and I really hope you're well. I, like I said, I'm going to be giving away a copy of Amy Gilley's Worsted book for free, brand new, untouched, apart from by me opening it as a gift. Um, so if you could put a comment below on what's your best pattern book or pattern magazine of 2021 was, then I will use a random generator to choose a winner and send that out, uh, I think we'll probably say by the 20th of January. Um, so yeah, pop a comment below. And please, if you could like, that would be great. Well, I hope you're all well and I look forward to speaking to you hopefully again soon. Take care, bye.